Right, time to get some work done. Do you own... F Wait, no, that can't be right. It's Friday already. <sighs> Looks like we missed a day thanks to lockdown. Must have just lost track of the days. Oh, not again. We, we do this all the time. This this lockdown started to feel like one big massive day. See, this is what happens when we don't make schedules for the week. We lose track of time. Every time we end up doing the same thing. I knew we should have made a schedule. Useless. All the days are run into each other and we probably should have put together a schedule or a team to break up the week. But we're here now. We can't change that. Okay. Look, if we start now, then we can get it finished in no time. Then we'll have the whole weekend to look forward to. Well, what if we what if we don't finish it in time? Uh, that would be so humiliating. As well as that, if we don't finish it today, our weekend is going to be absolutely ruined. It will be all I'll be able to think about. Oh yeah, because weekends these days are great, you know? All these time just to hang out together. Oh no wait, that's what we do every other day. That's what this mess has got us into. It's great. It's not a big project. If we get started now, make a good plan about how we'll finish it. We'll be done in no time. Don't worry. Then, once we're done, we can then relax afterwards and watch a good Pixar movie. Okay, I got this. Let's get started. Can't take that long. <clears throat> Okay, time for the fourth Zoom meeting of the day. Oh, I really need to dust cup of coffee. I am so tired. Okay, Zoom meeting number four of the day. This has been a long day. Thank goodness for the gift of coffee. Am I right? You know, too, too much coffee isn't good for you. You could end up with shakes or even really bad coffee breath. Yeah, but that's okay though. Because we're stuck in the house. No one's going to be smelling our coffee breath. I will. Yeah, I will. Enough about coffee. You know I'm losing track here. There's just... Look, there's so many online meetings that we have to be doing. What are we even in tonight? It's quiz night! Oh, Everyone great. got to love a good quiz. It's challenging. There might even be a prize. And it's, it's hard to talk on Zoom. People speak over you and everyone can hear you at once. It can be kind of difficult to speak up. But it's so fun. I test your general knowledge. You get to see your friends again. Yeah, great. But it's just so difficult. And also, I I reckon that some folk will be cheating because there's always some folk who start to cheating when they get the opportunity. How about we go along and see how well we can do? You never know, we could win tonight. Oh, hi everyone, how are you doing? <sighs> hey Alex, I'm kind of bored at the minute. Hey, do you fancy going on a walk? Oh, you're busy. Um, how about later today then? Oh, okay. Maybe another day? Should I go on a walk without them? I can't believe the Rizzy. Stop. Okay, so Alex isn't able to join us for a walk. Should we go for a walk? Wait, he's not able to join us for a walk? Imagine them not being free, man. People suck. No one wants to do anything these days. Everyone's just staying at home. Do you know, a walk's the only thing we even get to do outside and they're just too busy. That's rubbish. And, and what if they start walking with someone else instead of us? We might then have to go out by ourselves again. Last time we went out for a walk, it was so boring. Like, our earbuds ran out of battery and there was no one to talk to. Shut up, man. Gee, I can't believe they're busy again. I think they're lying to us. We should try and find out. What if we go for a walk by yourself today and they might be free tomorrow and they're not lying? I, I, I don't think that's a good idea. Why, why don't we just watch a little bit of YouTube or Netflix or something and just, just relax? Uh, if we miss one day, it might be easy to miss another day, and then another day. I mean, 
We've already missed three days. We might never go out again. Why don't we ask Zara? They might be free. Aye, right. No, they'll be busy too. They're always busy. Everyone's busy. Ugh, sack it. Let's just leave it. All in favour. I can't believe I'm getting so angry over such a small thing. I really need to work on that. Elijah was afraid. He ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there, while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom brush, sat down under it and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. At once, an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was some baked bread over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time, touched him and said, 
get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up, ate and drank, strengthened by that food. He travelled forty days and forty nights until he reached Mount Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, put to death your prophets with the sword. I am the only one left. And now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake was a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face, went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? It's strange to think that it has been a, a year since the start of the first lockdown. It's been quite a, quite a crazy year with life having to change quite a lot and quite drastically for a lot of people. Uh, and it's been, for lack of a better word, quite difficult. I personally think that the year has went by incredibly quickly. Uh, I think one of the side effects for the, from the various lockdowns and the tiered systems is I sometimes lose track of the days. <laughs> Something that was maybe hinted in the dramas that we've done so far. Uh, and that, I think, maybe added to the fact that this year's went by so quickly, as this life is a little bit different and strange for all of us right now. And one thing that we were bringing up last month was a side effect, a side effect of all the, the, the various lockdowns and stuff that we've had has been maybe a sense of our community being slightly lost during this time. And last month, we were speaking about the importance of community and trying to, to bring it here in amongst this time where it's difficult to be a community and how important that is to our faith and to our walk. Today, I want to think a little bit about mental health. And I think mental health is something that has affected many people throughout Britain for a long time. And for some people, it's uh, fully diagnosed and it's a major thing in their life that they've had to deal with for a long time. For others, it might be something so simple as during this lockdown, because life has uh, became so different that it started to affect them differently. So maybe they start to feel maybe a little bit down in the dumps, maybe a little bit out of it. But I think this whole subject is really important for those that maybe have been dealing with mental health issues for many years. And for those that maybe are starting to have small shades of mental health things within their life that they need to work on. And I always start by thinking of, there's something I was told when I was a little bit younger that I would say is a complete lie. And that is, if you struggle with mental health issues, then clearly there must be like a lack of faith or clearly there must be a a wrong connection between you and God. And I'd like to start by saying that as a lie, as I've said, that I know many people who uh, handle mental health issues as well as being a Christian. And they're some of the strongest and most amazing Christians I've met. And uh, there's some people in scripture that also go through this very same thing. One of which being a guy called Elijah, who does struggle with mental health issues quite majorly. And we see see in this part of scripture that we've read already, a major moment where he is fully feeling the brunt of that, the difficult time that he's facing. And I think that through looking into that difficult time, we might be able to draw strength for maybe the moments when we feel down, or maybe for the grander scheme, those who are dealing with bigger things such as depression and anxiety. Maybe I hope by looking at Elijah, we're able to draw stuff from him And maybe that can help build us up for a walk as we continue walking with the Lord. So let's think a little bit about the context of Elijah and the world that he was in. So Elijah was a prophet. He was a prophet that was uh, to essentially remind the people of Israel of God, to remind them that he's the God who freed them from slavery and brought them into this new land 
of prosperity. And uh, during the time that he was a prophet, the king and queen of Israel, well, they actually were trying to kill people who worship God. They were trying to th throw them out of their cities and throw out of their uh, entire settlements. The whole point was they didn't want God anymore. Elijah was trying to remind them of who God is. So uh, we kinda, the first thing that kind of stands out in the, the life of Elijah, the first thing that maybe you would remember from stories when you're in kids' clubs or maybe in youth meetings when you studied it, is this notion of uh, a showdown happening between, uh, between the prophet of God, Elijah, and the prophets of Baal, the, the new God that the people of the time were starting to worship. And this happens on top of a mountain, and it's a cool concept where uh, two groups of people are, are seeking to, to have a pyre get set alight by their God. So uh, Elijah's praying to God, wanting his pyre to get set up in fire, and the prophets of Baal are looking to do the same. It's this thing where everyone's watching. It must be quite an interesting thing to see. Uh, but the prophets of Baal, they stand in front of their altar. They start to scream and call and, and hope for fire to come from heaven, and nothing happens. And Elijah just waits, and then when it's his turn, he pours water, and then more water, and then more water on his altar, so that all the, the wood is soaking wet. And then he prays, and God sends down fire from heaven. This awesome miracle, this awesome sign to remind the people that God is the one who'd saved them, that God is the one who's in charge. And it's this awesome moment where I'm sure if I was Elijah, I would be on such, such a high... <laughs> Such a moment where I can be like, this is so awesome. God is working so mightily. However, often after highs in life, there comes lows. Because right after this, he got a letter from the queen and the queen was saying, I'm going to come kill you. So he ran away and he tried to get to a, a place to, to hide and to be away from the king and the queen who are trying to hunt him down. And he goes out into the wilderness. He leaves his, he leaves his servant aside and he's just broken. He's just facing a really hard time mentally as he sits down in the shade and he prays openly and honestly with God. And he's just like, I want it to be over. I want it to be done. We're seeing an insight into someone who's very clearly struggling with a, a big part of depression. And it's, it's such a massive thing for some people and maybe something that they're used to. For some people, it might be something that they've never experienced before. But it's this, this large moment where after this great high, suddenly there's quite a mighty low. And he's, he's looking to God in this moment. And I'd like to think about the way that God works with Elijah and the way that God uh, works this period through in his life. He starts off quite plainly and quite simply. I'm going to say three things. The first thing that he does is he gives Elijah food and drink. It's quite an interesting statement that that's the very first thing that God does. What God's trying to do in this moment is he's trying to take care of Elijah. He's trying to help Elijah take care of himself. Sometimes when we reach dark and uh, difficult times of life, it's so easy to put things that are important to the side and to almost hide away from it, to isolate yourself, just like what he done by leaving his servant uh, when he went into the wilderness. And it's quite a difficult thing to deal with, but the thing that God does is just encourage him to take time to take care of himself. And that's something that's so important to us. I remember at the start of the first lockdown, I was starting to feel a little bit down. And for me, it was only just a little bit. Some people struggled with a lot worse things. But I remember Calm just speaking to me and just saying, Johnny, your sleeping pattern's all over the place at the moment. You, life has kind of changed. You don't have the rhythm of work in the same way as we did before. Everything's all online. Maybe why don't you start by taking a little small few tasks and focusing your day around that. And that will maybe help you as you're struggling. And that small, simple thing, just taking a little bit of time to take care of myself, made a, a large impact on me and started me on the journey of getting out of, for me, what was a small low and into a, a better pattern of life for a while. And that was really impactful for me. And it was something so small. And that's the first step that God does with Elijah. He gives him food and water to help him go on this journey that they're going to go on together. He gives him a little bit of time to get himself a little bit more right. Then afterwards... He goes, he goes on a journey with God and he ends up being in a cave. And God just simply asks him, what are you doing here? The second thing that stands out is God asks us to speak honestly and openly with him and with other people. One of the things we're going through at the moment is a prayer course in our Monday night studies. And one of the things that's came up a couple of times is the importance of just being open and honest in prayer through the good times and through the bad times and speaking to God 
and being honest about what's in your heart and on your mind, even when things are tough and when things are difficult. And actually, just by opening up, that starts a process of you and God working through the problem that you have at that time. And it starts a process where you can start to make yourself more right, make yourself better during this time. Work on your mental health a little bit more. And that's so integral to Elijah's journey here as he talks through his problems with God and what's happening. And then after that, <clears throat> after that, God then sends a fire and a wind and an and earthquake. And it's like a crazy moment that's a bit confusing sometimes, but really interesting. Then after all these big physical signs, there's a small, still voice. Those other things you can see from miles off, but a small voice, you have to draw close to hear it. What God is saying in this final part, what God is doing in Elijah's life, is he's letting him know that he is with him. That God is with him in that small cave. That he is coming and he's speaking quietly and intimately with him. And what does that mean? It means God seeks us in our lows and in our highs to come close to him. To seek to be with him during this time. To come to him in prayer. To try to read the word of God. And through doing so, him and you can work through this difficult part of your life. That's what happened with Elijah. And then we see him after that going up and continuing on his journey. And that's, I think, the challenge and the call that comes through this passage. This notion of firstly, taking a little bit of time to take care of yourself, putting time aside, maybe putting some things in place to, to guide your path. Then secondly, speak things out openly with God and with other people, maybe brothers and sisters in Christ, or maybe somebody you trust in your family. And then beyond that, draw close to God in this time because he seeks to draw close to you. That's what stands out from Elijah. And then beyond that, you get to see Elijah's journey continue. And that's what's so important about during this time where things are difficult and tough, is the fact that we're able to continue on this journey with God and grow and develop through the good times and through the bad times. But what happens to Elijah next? I think that's something that's quite important, something we'll look at next. So we've looked a little bit at Elijah when he was spending time in that cave and how God was working through this difficult time in his life. And what happens next? Well, God calls him to go and to act and to do various things. And one of those things is to essentially uh, get this young guy called Elisha and take him under his wing for a period of time. Uh, go and essentially train him to be the prophet that's going to succeed him in the future. And you got this uh, little bit where it then just suddenly cuts off and then we don't hear about him until he's finished his job as a prophet, but it suggests that he's continuing on for a wee while before he uh, passes on the mantle to someone else. And that's the thing that stands out to me during this time. He lets Elijah know that he's not alone. Elisha is going to go with him and they're going to continue this journey of faith together. And that's the amazing thing about scripture. When Jesus died and rose again, he united all people who, are, who might be so different through faith to one another. And we are called within faith to help each other, to continue on this journey of faith together. That's the important part at the end where he's getting sent off to continue doing his mission. He's getting reminded that he's not alone. As he already knows God is with him, so also is his brothers and sisters. And together they will continue to grow in their relationship with God despite the good times and the bad times, despite the struggles that he'll have within his own mental health. And that is the thing that I find so important is this notion of by faith we're brought together. If anyone knows, whenever I talk about faith, I always bring up the notion of the shield of faith. And the reason why I think that's so important is because the shield that's been spoke about by Paul as he speaks about this is a Roman terror shield. And that's a famous shield in history, one that we look to a lot. And actually, the reason that that was made that way is so that you can defend the people next to you, your brothers in arms. And that's what we are as Christians. We're a unit, we're a family. And the point of faith is to help and build one another up in the good times and in the bad times to draw close to one another and help each other. And I think during this time of pandemic, as we're continuing through, uh, now that things are like a little bit alleviated for a wee while, we, we pray that we come together, bringing forward that notion of community that was mentioned last month and seeking together to grow in our faith, to help each other during the difficult times and to continue spreading his word. Hopefully that has been a bit of an impact to you as you continue to seek after God.
So this is the end of our service. Uh, we thank you for watching it with us. Hopefully that has been a blessing to you as you've been able to go through a little bit of First Kings, look into the life of Elijah. And hopefully that has helped you maybe when it comes to your own mental health and helping you to be able to work through those difficult times that do arise. And we hope that from today you're blessed and there's an opportunity for us to worship God together through the songs that have came. Uh, and lastly, we pray that as the, the weeks continue, as schools start to come back online and you're able to go back in person, I mean, we, we hope that you're blessed from that and you actually get a, get a better sense of education than maybe what you're feeling online. Uh, we hope that as things maybe start to go back to being in person, that we're able to bring about that sense of community that we spoke about last month, but then also bring about this sense of being together in faith and helping one another. We hope that that continues to grow and thrive in our church. So let us just finish our service today just with a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you that you are always the same, yesterday, today, and forever. Just as you helped Elijah through difficult times, you help us through difficult times. No matter how prevalent they are, no matter how often they are, we can always know that you are there and you're with us and you're for us. You empower us and enable us to go on to continue to serve you and do mighty awesome things just as Elijah did.
We pray that we'd find brothers and sisters to draw close to. We pray that we'd seek each other to build one another up during the good times and during the bad. And Lord, we pray that you'll continue to inspire us to look more like your son, Jesus. We pray this all in your name. Amen.